We're only a few weeks into 2022 and investors already experienced a vicious stock market sell-off. The S&P is down around 9% so far, which is the worst start to a year ever. Yes, you've heard that right. The worst start to a year of the S&P 500 over the last 100 years. The Nasdaq is down 14% and under the hood, things have been even more turbulent. It's probably fair to say that 50% of yeah, so-called tech stocks with a market capitalization of under $100 billion are down somewhere in the range of 40, 50 or 60% or sometimes even 70 or 80%. And obviously these sell-offs and seeing your portfolio lose in value every single day doesn't feel particularly nice. And some of the emotions you might be going through may lead to investment decisions that you might regret in a few days, weeks or months. So it's incredibly important to stay calm during stock market corrections or even crashes. So, and so in this video, I'll share a few tips that should help you make more rational decisions when your portfolio is down big time. And so without further ado, let's get started. Hey there, my name is René Zalman. And to be fair, it's not like I have 20 years of investing experience under my belt. I've been investing for around five years now. So with the December 2018 sell-off, the March 2020 Corona market crash, of course, and the recent stock market drop in yeah, early 2022, especially in the tech sector, are the only corrections or stock market crashes that I have experienced firsthand with my own money on the line. I was basically still a kid in 08 during the great financial crisis. But with that being said, I feel like I have managed to stay yeah, incredibly calm during yeah, times of major volatility. So times of steep stock declines. And so in this video, I want to share three to four tips that may help you make as rational decisions as possible during times of distress. So regardless of whether you are primarily an active investor who's selectively choosing businesses to invest in, or whether you are a passive investor that just regularly puts away a certain amount of yeah, his or her paycheck into yeah, maybe one, two or three index funds, having the right Investment time horizon is all that matters during stock market corrections or crashes. If you are invested in US stocks, for example, basically every market correction can be considered a better than average buying opportunity. Over the long run, US stocks tend to go up. And the longer your investment horizon, the higher your odds of actually generating a positive return. In a yeah, somewhat famous blog post titled Too Much, too soon, too fast. Morgan Hustle included a chart that showed different investing time periods and the percentage of times US stocks generated a positive return for each period. So for example, if your investing horizon is just one day, you are essentially flipping a coin, whether you will yeah, end the day with a positive or a negative return. But if you extend your time horizon, things quickly look very different. For instance, five-year investment horizons produce positive returns four out of five times. And once you extend your time horizon to 20 years, well, between 1871 and 2018, there has not been a period during which investors lost money. Assuming, and please pay attention now, assuming they did not panic sell during the inevitable market crashes that, yeah, I can, I can assure you happened over every single 20 year period. So you just have to accept that these kind of short term bumps are part of your investing journey that you are on as an investor and you have to sit them out. You know that corrections will happen. You just don't know when they will happen, but when they do, you will have to remain calm and be at peace with yeah, those drawdowns. So again, being patient, thinking long-term, accept, accepting that at some point your portfolio will lose temporarily 20, 30 or 40% in value and understanding your own investment horizon. Well, this can help you tune out the noise that you will inevitably encounter on social media when major indices like the S&P 500 drop 10% or even more. Morgan Hustle himself concludes, the more your time horizon compresses, the more you rely on luck and tempt ruin. All right, the second mental trick that can make you a better investor is to view price declines as opportunities as opposed to yeah, a threat to your portfolio value. Flipping your mindset is absolutely critical in my opinion, 
because if your investment horizon is five years plus, well then declining prices are something positive. They offer you to buy stocks at more attractive prices than before. So if anything, you want to consider whether you have or you have the yeah, liquidity to take advantage of these volatile periods. So again, instead of thinking of sell-offs as something dramatic, you want to assess whether Mr. Market is making you any attractive offers. So what I usually do is I first consider the stocks in my portfolio. Did the price of any of the stocks I own go down so much that I can now add to that stock with yeah, the prospect of generating market beating returns. And then next I have a watch list because I think investors should always have a watch list with companies that they have already researched and that they have identified as great businesses. But well, these businesses were so far not available at attractive entry prices. This is why they are on investors watch lists. So then I check whether this has possibly changed during the recent sell-off. Let me just show you a short clip of legendary investor Peter Lynch, who has mastered this yeah, mental shift. In this clip, he outlines why he thinks investors should actually love volatility. I, I, I love volatility. I, I think I remember when uh, in 1972, the market went from uh, uh, down dramatically and Taco Bell went from 14 to one. They had no debt. They never had a, a restaurant close. And uh, I started buying at seven, but I, I kept on to it and it went to one. And uh, it was the largest position in Magellan in 1978 when it was bought out for, by $42 by Pepsi-Cola. And I think it would have gone to 400 if they didn't buy it out. I think volatility is terrific. What you learn from history is the market goes down. It goes down a lot. The math is simple. There's been 93 years a century. This is easy to do. The market's had 50 declines of 10% or more. So 50 declines in 93 years. About once every two years, the market falls 10%. We call that a correction. That means that's a euphemism for losing a lot of money rapidly. But we, you know, we call it a correction. And uh, uh, so. 50 declines in 93 years, about once every two years, the market falls 10%. Of those 50 declines, 15 have been 25% or more. That's known as a bear market. We've had 15 declines in 93 years. So every six years, the market's going to have a 25% decline. That's all you need to know. You need to know the market's going to go down sometime. If you're not ready for that, you shouldn't own stocks. And it's good when it happens. If you like a stock at 14 and it goes to six, that's great. You understand the company, you look at the balance sheet, and they're doing fine. And you're hoping to get to 22 with it. 14 to 22 is terrific. 6 to 22 is exceptional. So you take advantage of these declines. They're going to happen. No one knows when they're going to happen. Now, there is another mental trick that I would like you to apply. Don't consider yourself an investor and instead regard yourself as a business owner. Because stocks can sell off for all sorts of reasons. The sell-off we are seeing right now, for example, is probably caused by a multitude of reasons. There are geopolitical tensions between yeah, the US, the EU and Russia. There is inflation risk, interest rates is a big topic and yeah, the Fed is making big decisions and so on and so forth. And while it is certainly intellectually challenging and stimulating to understand these complex topics, I don't think as an investor spending too much time on these subjects yeah, does you any good. I think you are better off spending your time trying to better understand the dynamics of the businesses you already own, or as I said, the businesses on your watch list. And you should always focus on this first, so the business fundamentals. Daily price movements are absolutely ir irrelevant if you truly adopt this yeah, business owner mindset. And I think Warren Buffett himself explained this concept phenomenally well in his 2013 letter to shareholders. Because in this letter he compared his investments in stocks to his investment in a farm. And here's the anecdote that he shared in this letter. There's one major difference between my two small investments and an investment in stocks. Stocks provide you minute to minute valuations for your holdings. Whereas I have yet to see a quotation for either my farm or the New York real estate. It should be an enormous advantage for investors in stocks to have those wildly fluctuating valuations placed on their holdings. And for some investors, it is. After all, if a moody fellow with a farm bordering my property yelled out a price every day to me 
at which he would either buy my farm or sell me his. And those prices varied widely over short periods of time depending on his mental state. How in the world could I be other than benefited by his erratic behavior? If his daily shout out was ridiculously low and I had some spare cash, I would buy his farm. If the number he yelled was absurdly high, I could either sell to him or just go on farming. Owners of stocks, however, too often let the capricious and irrational behavior of their fellow owners cause them to behave irrationally as well. Because there is so much chatter about markets, the economy, interest rates, price behavior of, of stocks, etc. Some investors believe it is important to listen to pundits. And worse yet, important to consider acting upon their comments. So I think the bottom line is that if you truly understand the businesses you are invested in, then the mood of the farmer is pretty much irrelevant. So the next time you catch yourself being frightened by a sudden price decline in one or multiple of your stocks, I want you to imagine that there is an angry business person who's really yelling at you, trying, you, trying to force you to sell your business. And if that visual image won't calm you down, probably nothing will. Let me just underline this point with a real example. One of the stocks in my portfolio is the e-commerce company Etsy that is basically focused on handmade or vintage items and craft supplies such as yeah, furniture, toys, clothing, home decor and so on and so forth. Now let's just pretend I'd own the entire company and my company would not be yeah, publicly traded. This means I would not receive an yeah, basically an acquisition offer every other day. Instead, I would probably be extremely, extremely focused on the day-to-day -day operations. And overall, my company, so Etsy, seems to be doing very well. To keep this short here, let me just show you how Etsy's revenue developed over the course of the last, yeah, let's say the last 10 or 15 quarters. Last 12 month revenue went from 296 million US dollars in early 2016 to 2.2 billion as of September 2021. And investors, of course, enjoyed that nice constant growth from quarter to quarter. Let's now take a look at Etsy's stock chart. Between late November 2021 and today, the stock was basically cut in half. Yep, the stock is down 50% in less than two months. That's an incredibly fast-paced sell-off in my opinion. Now let's imagine you have your regular day at the office as the business owner of Etsy. But suddenly your secretary knocks at your door and informs you that there is yeah, some business person who wants to talk to you. Well, once sad businessman is in your office, he starts screaming at you, telling you that your business is in real trouble, but that he wants to make you an offer anyway. He wants to buy Etsy for the price of its current enterprise value, so around 19 billion US, US dollars. Now, would you sell? Well, if you are the owner, you most likely wouldn't, at least not if the business is fundamentally intact, which Etsy apparently is. Okay, now another thing I want to point out is that running a concentrated portfolio is your best shot at outperforming the market. I've talked about this in previous videos of mine. But of course, with concentra concentration comes volatility. So in a way, volatility is the price that you have to pay if you want to beat the market. Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's business partner, partner. he has famously said, if you can't stomach 50% declines in your investment, you will get the mediocre returns you deserve. Yeah, and I think that's a great quote to wrap up this video. So as always, may your finances and investments prosper. Good luck.